Welcome to our class, Dr. Rajul Jain. How are you today? Thanks for having me, Guy. I'm great. How are you doing? Okay, so uh, please tell us about your work at Microsoft. What is your title and what do you do? Yeah, I'm a senior market research manager at Microsoft. Um, I work in a central market research or customer and market research. Um, and I do a lot of product development and product, product marketing strategy research um, for our browser search and content business. Okay, this is stuff that everybody knows, everybody uses Microsoft, a lot of team, Microsoft Teams these days. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, my students don't know, but you were, you used to be a professor just like me, right? You were a professor, a great, a great researcher and a great professor at DePaul University. So you've actually taught the class I'm teaching right now, the Intro to Research Methods, and so many of the students are sitting there, it's a required class, and they're wondering, why do I have to take this class? What do you want to tell them? Oh my gosh, this is just such a relevant question for me. Like you said, you know, I used to teach this class. I took this class as a grad student, as an undergrad, and then I used to teach this class. And a lot of times, you know, students wonder if, whether this has any practical application, like how would I be using it? And now that I work on the other side of the world, you know, the, the client side, it is so relevant and so pertinent. Like businesses these days, those days where research was done in a silo and nobody cared and everybody had that image of a nerd sitting behind their computer doing research, it's just all gone. Re organizations really value research now and research is part of their business strategy. It's not, we go hand in hand with all of the business groups at Microsoft and we, we are given a seat at the table. Um, and any decisions that we make, none of it is just because a leader thought it was a great idea or it was a gut reaction. Every decision we make um, is now driven by research. We have to put together evidence-based strategy behind any product, any product marketing efforts that we are putting out there. And everything starts with research. So it ends with research too, because you have to measure success of your efforts as well. Exactly. So it's right, very, yeah. very important. You have to you have to evaluate it That's, yeah. uh, so much. All right, um, a lot the the shiny new toy in our world of market research is social media analytics, and everybody's using this, and we love social media analytics. But I actually want to speak to you today for a few moments about survey research and quantitative research, and if we can speak about how um, real life clients or how brands such as Microsoft, right? I mean, multiple brands under Microsoft. Mm -hmm how organizations use survey research, what kind of questions do you ask with survey research and what kind of problems can you solve with them? That's a great question. And I understand that social media analytics is the new shiny toy, but nothing replaces the good old surveys. You know, you get so much insights from it. Um, at Microsoft, and particularly in my role where I support product development and product marketing, um, we do a lot of foundational research with surveys. So just understanding the market opportunity. Uh, for example, if you're gonna roll out a new product, what are some of the unmet needs and consumer pain points around that? Um, like for example, we just did a market opportunity analysis for content, uh, understanding what type of content people are looking for, where there is an unmet need, where Microsoft can interject with new and refreshing content, uh, for especially for the younger generation, like whether it's sports or finance or shopping. So that's one application. We use a lot of surveys for value prop and message testing. But now we have a great product. What are the benefits and how can we package it in a way that resonates with our consumers and they find it appealing? So we did a lot of uh, value prop research for Bing, which is our search engine. Just trying to understand how can we stand against Google? Like what's the unique and differentiating value prop for Bing? And then a third category that we use surveys a lot for is uh, concept testing. So we develop all of these great solutions for our consumers and then we take them to our consumers and say, hey, does this solve a need for you? Is it pertinent? How would you see this executed? And we do a lot of concept value testing through surveys to prioritize our solutions because obviously you know, the engineering team comes up with so many ideas in a given day, we can't prioritize everything. Uh, we are always uh, optimizing for resources. So we do a lot of surveys for concept testing as well. So would you say that um, the research team 
almost also may at times um, determine the likelihood of a creative concept to come forward. Oh my gosh, all the time, not may, it's a must. The way we have set up this process is engineering has to work with us. So we actually kind of own the end-to-end -end process. Like I do a lot of my ideation sessions with uh, engineering team where I bring in insights from value prop for market opportunity, unmet needs, pain points, and then we work together and ideate on the solutions. And then we test those solutions and get back to engineering and say, hey, here are the things that are not working out. We should probably just drop them. And here are the uh, features that really uh, consumers are relating with. And it's interesting because you will see the end to end of this process and you will see the features and concepts that you worked with actually landing in the product and millions of consumers using it. That's, that's like the real gratification that comes out of research because you drove all of this insights and now it's, it's tangible, it's in consumers' hands. It's, it's amazing. Uh, let's talk just for a few moments about sampling. Uh, how do you, how do you uh, all the sampling techniques out there with their own strengths and weaknesses, can you speak a little bit about sampling in today's digital survey world? That's a very good question. Um, we work a lot with our uh, third party sample providers to get us a representative sample. Um, most of the time, I think one thing that we have to always keep in mind is you're developing products for a niche audience. You're not, not developing it for everybody. You know, not everybody is into Microsoft. Not everybody is as tech, tech savvy or innovation oriented. So we do a lot of sampling techniques where we do like, um, niche audiences. So we do click through balancing. We do a lot of uh, um, going through like soft quotas and natural fallout of audiences. But sampling is very important for us because we look at niche audiences. So we have defined our own screening criteria for sampling that we work with our third party vendors very closely with. Third party vendors being such as uh, Qualtrics, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Qualtrics is one of them. We work with Toluna. There, there's like a lot. We go through a full process of approving a third party vendor. So there's a lot of them uh, in the ecosystem. Very good, very good. And uh, a lot of people may know Amazon Enter, but I definitely know yeah. you don't use that. All right, let's talk about when are surveys better than qualitative research or more appropriate? What kind of questions do you prefer to use surveys for rather than qualitative techniques? Yeah, one thing that is uh, important to know for surveys is because you are not going to go very deep um, into any of the perceptions or any of the consumer responses, they're really good for like close ended responses where you are just trying to understand the what uh, of, a, of a business question and not why or how because that's more appropriate for qualitative. Usually the process we have built is we start very open ended with qual. And that kind of drives hypothesis uh, development that then we then validate through quantitative research. So think of it as a sequence where, you know, you're trying to get the breadth of like the depth of things and then come up with hypothesis and then you validate that uh, broadly with your surveys. Okay, so research triangulation always the best uh, strategy. Of oh, absolutely. We use both of them very heavily. Well, it's so it's so awesome to it's so awesome to to see somebody who comes from the academic world and has all the theoretical and, and methodological foundations who's now practicing in the real world and showing that this actually matters. All right, you've taught so many, you've taught and mentored so many students along your academic journey. What now that you are outside in the so-called real world, what kind of advice would you want to share with my students and any student watching this on YouTube? as they prepare for their uh, post-graduation career? Yeah. Um, one thing that I would say students need to learn is, you know, have business acumen. I don't think anybody in the traditional sense of the way is a researcher anymore. We are all business consultants who rely on research to answer business questions. But if you don't understand what, what business is really about, what are the business goals, what's the business strategy, um, then you cannot really convert those insights into anything actionable for your stakeholders. So one thing is always develop business acumen and look through the eyes of a business consultant rather than just as a researcher. Um, another thing I would say is a lot of times when we do research, we talk a lot of research speak, learn how to translate it into business speak. Um, 
it's very, very important to be a storyteller uh, right now in, in the business world. You have to wrap your research in a story and, and make sure that you resonate with your business stakeholders. So be a storyteller more than a researcher. Um, and then one, another thing that is important is um, have grit, you know? Sometimes a lot of the research findings that you're gonna go present are not gonna be aligned with what the business thinking is. Um, but you have to, if you're a good straight storyteller, if you're a good business consultant and you go with about it the right way, you, you will break the, the ceiling and you will break the general norms and assumptions that people have, but you've got to have grit. Wonderful advice, wonderful yeah. words. Thank you so much for your time today. And thanks for the opportunity, Guy. Good luck to everybody who's taking your class. Um, and if there are any other questions or anybody wants to reach out to me about my journey or anything, I'm happy to do so. All right, we will uh, include all of your contact info, your Twitter, Instagram, and all of that in the comments, Sounds in the good. description of the video. Thank you so much, Dr. Jane. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.